Hey friends, today we are hanging out in Boston for the very first time. I came up with Roosevelt's for the Fan Expo and I can't wait to go out and explore the city with you. We're going to be checking out some iconic filming locations like Cheers, the original Boston pub where everybody knows your name. We're going to be going to the Samuel Adams Brewery and I figured we would grab a cup of coffee, eat some food and just have a beautiful Boston kind of day. Anywho's, let's go do this. Boston is such a beautiful city and I can't wait to go around and experience all the amazing things it has to offer and to share it all with you guys. I love coming to a city that I've never been before and just exploring and discovering and learning all about its history. And there's a lot of history in Boston. I definitely want to reenact the Boston Tea Party, maybe go to Fenway and watch my first baseball game, and also check out the local bakeries. I hear they are amazing. So if you guys have any recommendations, please let me know because I'd love to do it when I come back. And I just love sharing my experiences with you. So I think we need to start by uh, maybe getting a a cup of coffee. I mean, since we're in Boston, we might as well do a Dunkin' run because Boston runs on Dunkin', but this isn't any ordinary Dunkin' Donuts. This is the original Dunkin' Donuts, the very first Dunkin' Donuts that's ever existed back in 1950. They even have a little plaque on the wall over here with the address on there. How cool is that? We're gonna have coffee at the very first Dunkin' Donuts. The original Dunkin' Donuts is in Quincy, and it wasn't always called Dunkin' Donuts. It was actually called Open Kettle. And then in 1950, they switched the name to Dunkin' Donuts, and history was made. And it's so cool to be here. I'm so excited. I mean, I am Team Dunkin' Donuts, but you guys let me know what you are. Are you Team Starbucks, Team Dunkin' Donuts, or maybe Team Tim Hortons? Let me know in the comments either way. I'm just excited to get a coffee here. Look at how cool this is. On the inside, it's kind of like a diner and it has a counter. It has a mural of the original location. And then the donuts are in like a little uh, bakery case. And they have some special donuts here, like the Fenway Faithful for the Boston Red Sox. And then they've got butternut down there, coconut, glazed stick. They have jelly munchkins. When did that happen? I love that. Yeah, so I, I think we're gonna get a coffee. I'm just excited to get a coffee here. My mom runs on Dunkin' Donuts. In Pennsylvania, Dunkin' Donuts is a big thing. But if you go to other places like Florida, it's all about Starbucks and same thing with California. I mean, Dunkin' Donuts are in Florida, but there's not as many and they're not as nice. But in Pennsylvania and up in New England, Dunkin' Donuts is a huge deal. So it's a huge deal to me and my mom. My mom loves it. Of course, when you're at the original Dunkin', you gotta get yourself a coffee, sit at the counter, get a donut. Yes. What'd you get? Dude, I got a butternut. Oh, yeah, a yeah, butternut? Yeah, it looks like, a, looks like a peanut stick. It does look like a peanut stick. I don't know. Something different that we can't have in Florida. I got the Boston cream. Fitting. Fitting, right? Fitting. Cheers. Oh. 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 Cheers. Oh. Cheers. <laughs> and do you dunk your donut? No, I thought it was so good. <laughs> I can't believe that just happened, but I'm gonna take full responsibility for this and I'm cleaning this all up myself. I'll clean it all up. I'll ask them for a mop. I was trying to open it so that I can dunk my donut and it didn't work. Get these ices in here. Scoop those ices in that bag there. There we go, I'll do it. There we go, get some napkins. We'll have this fixed up in a jiffy. I've worked in restaurants my whole entire life, so I know how to clean up a spill pretty fast. <laughs> but I can't believe that happened. Only at the original Dunkin' Donuts. There we go, like brand new. Nothing ever happened. There we go. And the bag's still holding up with all the, oh no, it's dripping. <laughs> I was gonna say the bag's holding up with all the ice. We gotta get that wall too. Oh, gotta get it all. It. Oh no, oh no. Don't don't cause a trail. I'm gonna grab these. Three men cleaning up a spill in Duncan. There we go. Get down here. 
Well, I guess that is enough of the Duncan business. We cleaned up our mess and now we are all caffeinated and ready to go out and explore. And I think we're gonna make our way to Cheers, which I'm so excited because I watched that TV show so much when I was growing up. And uh, we're gonna go to the place that inspired it. And it's gonna be so fun. I can't wait, they have food, they have drinks, they have souvenirs, and I can't wait to just see it like in person. The pub itself is located right down on Beacon Street here. Uh, you can see it across the way there, and it looks like they're doing a little construction to the front facade there, but I think it's downstairs. That's how you get into the pub. I think the top one is just like the gift shop area. I also hope you guys appreciate my nice little flannel I decided to wear. I was just really in the flannel spirit. And this is a Roosevelt uh, flannel. I think it's actually Scarlet Witch, like from the Marvel. They do Marvel flannels, uh, Roosevelt's does. But I think it's so fitting for me to come to Boston. You know what I mean? I can just picture myself wearing a flannel, going to Dunkin' Donuts, going to Cheers, and just exploring the city. So I decided to do it. And it's not that hot out. It's actually really breezy, cool here. Uh, uh, I like the weather a lot, much better than Florida when it comes to heat wise, you know? And here it is, the pub that inspired the hit TV show Cheers, where everybody knows your name. And this is definitely the definition of a hole in the wall. Look at this. You actually have to go downstairs and uh, I love how it actually looks old on the outside. Look at that door. It's got a nice old door, it says cheers on it. And also, uh, welcome to Bowl and Finch Pub, which was the, this is the name of the pub. And they just drew inspiration from it uh, to create the show, but I love it. This is so cool already. Oh, look, brick floor right there. Another old door. <laughs> I don't know why I'm so excited about the doors. Ooh. Nice little doormat here. Welcome to Cheers Boston. In case you didn't know, Cheers, uh, the show, was a fictional place and the, the bar that we're going to was just the inspiration. Like this is where they were like, okay, we're gonna base our show off of this type of bar. And it's kind of like uh, The Office in Scranton. Like I grew up in Scranton and The Office is from Scranton, but none of it was ever filmed in Scranton. None of it. So it's really cool. And uh, there's actually a little uh, sign in here that gives you a little bit more history. Here is a little backstory about how this ended up being the inspiration for the show. And it's really cool because three producers were just looking to create a sitcom about a neighborhood bar. And one of the producers suggested Boston, where sports and politics were hot issues in the local like watering holes. So they uh, stumbled in here one day and they were like, this is it. This is the one they visit. They visited several dozen like bars and uh, they came back and they were like, yep, this is the one and the rest is history. The show premiered on September 30th, 1982 and became one of the top rated shows in TV history. How cool is that? And here it is. Look at this. This is so cool in here. I love seeing everything on the walls. This is nice. Look at that sign there. The bar is first come, first serve. So if you find an open seat, you can hop up there. But it's been full this whole entire time. If you want to sit down and eat, you have to go to the table. But I would love to hop up in the bar. So if it opens up, I think I might hop up there. And uh, yeah, it's really cool in here. Lots of little Easter eggs and fun tie-ins to the show that uh, people love. I got myself a Sam Adams and it comes in a nice little Cheers uh, mug here. I probably should have got something instead of Sam Adams since that's where we're gonna go later to the brewery, but I mean, win in Boston, might as well. And win in Cheers, you know, Cheers, Boston, Sam Adams. Here is a look at the menu from Cheers and they have got they've got some good options here And I also love how all of the characters are actually on the menu So you got like Sam starters Woody's garden greens. You've got Cheers pub burgers. You got Norm sandwiches I think that's so cool. Oh Diane's entrees man. Maybe I should get an entree. It looks like they have a couple Oh, they have Boston clam chowder. 
Boston clam chowder. You know, I tried clam chowder once and I wasn't the biggest fan of it, mainly because I probably didn't get it from like New England. So I might actually get that so I can try it and see if I like it. And then a couple of other things. I'm still actually trying to wrap my head around the fact that we're sitting inside like the inspiration for Cheers, drinking some beers with some friends, about to try some chowder. And we've got the oyster crackers. These are the way. I feel like two packs is not enough though. We we'll probably need a lot more when I usually eat crackers with my soup. I eat tons of crackers, like tons. So here we go. First time diving in here. Oh my Lord, that's some hot chowder. Look at the steam coming out of that. You see that? I'm gonna burn my mouth or spill it on my shirt. Which one's it gonna be? Both? Does it say both? We'll find out. This is actually really, really good. In fact, I might say it's the best clam chowder I've ever had, but I do have to say it is the first clam chowder I've had in like New England or up in Boston, so it's hard to actually compare this to others, but look at all of that. Look at all the clams inside there. Tons and tons. Look at that. Every spoon has a bite in it, and I love that. Now, I'm sure if you have seen the show Cheers, then you realize that it looks a little bit different, you know, from inside here. But don't you worry, because they actually have a replica of the Cheers set, like the actual like set that they would have used to film uh, the TV shows. They have a replica set upstairs, and I think we're going to show you. You can actually go to the set, and it's in the back of where we were just sitting. And they have a nice little hallway with newspaper clippings from Boston's most beloved pub. And then they've got a bunch of merchandise, like a little gift shop here. Look at all these things. I feel like I need to buy something. If they had a flat brim, I want that sign. That'd be a cool thing to walk away with. Entrance sign for $64. I might come back for you. Or Norm's Nuts. But <laughs> you know, uh, maybe I want Woody's goodies. I got a little uh, you know, picture of Christy Alley right there. And then I think you go upstairs. Oh, yeah, right here. Cheers, uh, set bar and gift shop. More cheers upstairs. And then, oh, well, you don't say. Look at this. Well, this is fancy. Watch your head. I'm getting flashbacks. What are you getting flash? Oh, wow, look how cool this is. Oh, no, that's nifty. Wow, oh, you can take our photo. Would you look at that? Would you look at that? Before we make our way into the set, I did want to give you guys a little bit more of the backstory and the filming. And like I mentioned, none of it was ever filmed here except for the outside. I found out that they filmed the outside of the building and that's actually in the show. They filmed this structure itself and then everything else was in a like studio over in Los Angeles. But once the show ended, they sent all of the props from the, the show uh, to here. They sent it here and they built a uh, replica set with all of the original props from the show. So this is the original Cheers. You can actually come and get a drink at the set bar. I didn't know that, but here it is. This is uh, the replica set bar. Look at all the decorations on the walls here. This is all from the show itself. I love the fireplace. This is nice. Let me know if you guys actually recognize any of these uh, like pieces of memorabilia that they got from the show. Like, does anything stand out for you? Look at all of it in here. Look at this little jacket over here. That's cool. This is nice. I'm really happy that we ended up coming here. Also, I'm sad to say that uh, all of the statues aren't the real ones. I think that went to maybe somebody from the show. That's what they told me, but you never know. That was cool. I'm glad I got. I'm glad that we got to check it all out, and now uh, we can head out. They have a little gift shop in here too. I love when places have gift shops, you know, because you get to take home a piece. And I'm taking home a nice little Cheers hat. That's the way. 
Well, I had a great time inside Cheers. It was really awesome in there. And one of the things I didn't mention, I feel like should be mentioned, is Eddie Doyle, who was the bartender that worked inside uh, the pub when the producers came in. And even though they picked that bar as the inspiration, I feel like a lot of people have said Eddie Doyle, he was like the person that was creating the environment. So it was like he was the inspiration because it was the inspiration when he was with the bar itself and uh, fun fact he did know everybody's name and a lot of people would say that he was like the the the, the character like Sam and stuff like that but um, he's just his own thing you know that's awesome everyone spoke very highly of him he's retired now but he worked in there for years many many years and that is so cool he seems like a gent I wouldn't mind meeting there's also a beautiful park across the street, but we're gonna make our way to the Sam Adams Brewery now. We're continuing our Boston adventure and we made it to one of the places I've been super excited to actually come to and that is the Samuel Adams Brewery and you can do a tour of the brewery and we're going to do the VIP tour where we're going to actually go inside and we're going to try some of the beers that they're experimenting with. Some of these beers will never ever see the outside of this factory. Like it's crazy to think and I think we paid about $50 a ticket it and it's a 30 minute tour and uh, I'm excited this has been an amazing day I really love Boston and if you, any of you guys are from Boston and you're watching please give me some recommendations of things to do I'm definitely gonna come back up here uh, but now I'm, I'm just excited to be doing all like the touristy things eventually I do want to do some of the local spots but before you do anything local you have to be a tourist I have never seen any pictures of the Samuel Adams Brewery, but for some reason, now that I'm here, everything looks familiar like I've seen it a hundred times before. All the buildings, the signs, maybe they shot commercials here or something. It just looks really, really cool. And then uh, they have like a little patio over here and it says, welcome to the brewery. Tours are, tours are to the right. This way is the tap room and uh, for a little shopping. Wow, this is really cool. Look at us rolling in here. Look at this. Unlimited H2O. Unlimited Samuel Adams H2O. Oh, you don't say. You definitely need to drink up on plenty of water before you head into a brewery, especially Samuel Adams. So stay hydrated, friends. Now that we've gotten ourselves some high quality H2O, I think it's time to uh, start making our way into the brewery tour. And I'm excited, it looks so cool. I love all of the brick buildings here. Do we just go inside or do we have to wait for, oh, there's a sign. Oh, there's a door. There's a whole big wow, there's a whole keg with a door. The Samuel Adams Boston Brewery Experience. Visit our e-store. Hmm, you don't say. Look at all of these buildings. They all look so amazing. <laughs> they have a different selection of tours that you can actually join up on. Uh, the one that we're deciding to do, like I said, is the VIP. And that one was $50, but they have a $20 tour and a $10 tour. And I don't know the difference of it, but at least I'll show you guys what the VIP tour is like. And uh, we're gonna get to drink some special beer. And it's gonna be, it's gonna be real fun. Also, I got a new hat. Look at, I had to get, I mean, I'm so excited to be here. Now I got a new hat. Uh, but like I said, we're just here to kind of have fun and chill out and just learn about beer. Um, but the one thing I like to ask about the VIP tour is why are we taking the VIP tour today? So we can start over here. Why are you guys taking the VIP tour today? Well, uh, we're from uh, Phoenix, Arizona. My cousin strongly recommend this, and uh, so we signed up and we're uh, hoping for a good experience. Awesome. Mimi, how about you guys? Just because we wanted like, the best tour that you offered, so we wanted to go for it. That's good. I get the best tour. Anyway, how about you guys? <laughs> I like beer. Yeah, oh, I, like beer. <laughs> I like beer. I like beer. <laughs> this is so fun, and we're going to a beer tunnel. Oh, we get safety glasses. You don't say. 
It's crazy to think that any Sam Adams beer you have ever tried was first conceived right here. And this was such a cool story, the history of this place, because this brewery wasn't always Samuel Adams. It was actually a beer in the 18, I think, I think 1870s, she said. And they were making near beer, which is non-alcoholic beer because of the prohibition. And then once the once the prohibition was lifted, uh, this nobody wanted like like everyone wanted their alcohol back so the brewery just laid empty uh for years until the founder of sam adams came and created sam adams and look at it now i'm not going to show you guys everything on the tour just show you some glimpses and some highlights because if you ever plan on doing it i want you to enjoy it for yourself and some areas i'm not allowed to film because of uh you know new releases and stuff like that but uh, i'll get you caught up to date once uh we get through everything this looks so cool in here i don't know anything about uh making beer but I feel like I'm gonna learn something today. You will. I'm gonna learn you something. Will. Roosevelt's chug train. Here we go. Here we go. Woo. Cheers. Cheers. You got Cheers. a head start. Yeah. I see yeah. it. Oh, the air bubble got me. Look at how cool it is in here. I love seeing all of these barrels. Wow, look at the giant ones right here. This is so cool. They were talking about uh, these barrels right here and how they actually have to take them apart uh, and then reassemble them to bring them inside because they don't fit through the door there. And it's just so cool to be in such an awesome place like this. The Samuel Adams Brewery Tour is so worth it. I loved it so much. There were so many cool things that we got to learn. Um, one of the big things that I want to point out that I never knew uh, is that the fact that the owner or the uh, founder of uh, Samuel Adams, Jim Cook, actually invented the expiration date on beer. Like, he was the very first person in 1984. So prior to 1984, all of the beer, none, uh, like none of the beer had expiration dates. None of it. Like beer was just expired and it would take months sometimes of beers getting transported all across the country in like warm temperatures. And then eventually he started creating beer and he's like, there needs to be an expiration date and uh, he was the very first person to do it and he wanted to make sure everybody did it so he actually went and uh, he wrote up a bill and uh, he got it approved that all beer needs to have an expiration date and it does to this day but isn't that shocking i loved it we got to try a lot of cool beer we got to try one that was like a balsamic tasting one and it was really nasty and then we got to try a couple other ones but i enjoyed it a lot it was it's really really fun it's gonna be hard to top the Sam Adams brewery tour but we have made it back to the convention center and our hotel and uh, yeah I wanted to show you a little bit of the convention center this is it right here it's actually a big convention center it's got a nice dragon statue on the outside I don't know what that representation is uh, maybe I'll look it up and then uh, a cool spot out front there and good morning from Boston. It is now officially day two. I had a great night. I got some good sleep and I'm excited to go back out and explore more fun things to do in Boston. We have tickets to the uh, Boston Red Sox game tonight. I'm so excited. We're going to Fenway and I think they're playing the Blue Jays so it's going to be fun and then we're going to, you know, maybe grab some breakfast. Actually, we are going to go grab some breakfast at an iconic Boston spot and then we're going to head in and kick off uh, the fan expo and i'm so excited it's gonna be a great day i couldn't think of a better place to go get some breakfast than the legendary mike's pastry right here in the historic north end of boston and the line is out the door look at this this is a must for a lot of people and i'm so happy i get to try it 
Mike's Pastry is a staple here in Boston and people come from all around the world to come try their cannoli. It all started back in 1946. Mike spent years perfecting the cannoli and uh, some people say it's the best out there. It's the best one. Even Bostonians will come over here and as you've seen, it is packed in there. There's a line out the door, so I trust it. And we're gonna get a bunch of them because uh, we're gonna take them back to the Fan Expo and uh, treat everyone that's working the booth to a uh, little cannoli from Mike's. Look at the line of people in here waiting to get their hands on some of these cannolis. That's impressive. They got peanut butter cannolis, Oreo, Lemoncello, Amaretto, Espresso, Florentine, Pecan Caramel, Pistachio. It's endless. Wow, just look at the apple turnovers they got in here. And then the cinnamon stick. I love everything. They even make their own peanut butter cups. I'm all for a lot of this stuff. Oh, a lemon turnover. I've never had that before, and I love lemon. Oh, and blueberry. Actually, a lemon blueberry turnover sounds amazing. And then they got some muffins, like blueberry muffins, all the other good stuff, a couple croissants. I think we're here for the cannolis, though. Any establishment that ties their boxes with strings, you know delicious things await inside. Look at these precious beauties right here. Holy moly, the way they've got them all sitting in there. When I said that Mike's is known for their cannolis, I mean, now I'm a believer. I have never seen a better looking bunch of cannolis in my life. Holy moly. Wow. And then we got a couple of other uh, like miscellaneous things here. A Boston cream puff. I've never had that before, so tried that. Got a pink donut. Got a black and white cookie. Lots of good stuff. I am so excited to try these pastries. Uh, I think I picked the tiramisu one or the espresso one. I'm pretty sure it's tiramisu though. Or tiramisu if you're Michael Scott. Look at that. Look at how thick this is. The cannoli break. Oh, oh my lord. I don't think you could break cannolis. So we're eating it. Officially the best cannoli I think I've ever had in my life. Yep, I'm gonna say it right now. Now I do love, I, like I love tiramisu. And I also hear that modern pastry uh, is also in this area. They are actually pretty good. So maybe we might be able to try that one too. But right now, as it stands, that's the best cannoli I've ever had. Now that we've got a box full of cannolis, DTH is gonna take them back to the convention center and he's gonna set everything up. And we have about an hour until we're gonna meet back up with him. And I kinda just wanna explore around and do some more fun things in Boston. One of the things I knew I wanted to do when I heard I was coming up to Boston was to come out and see the Boston Tea Party Museum and ships. And uh, here it is right here. Look how cool this is. We're going to go around and check it out. And you can even go up on the ship and throw the tea in the water. You can see them actually doing it right now. Do you see it? How cool is that? Maybe we can do that. And then there's some boat tours and stuff like that. But I just want to protest. No taxation without representation. I decided I'm doing it. I'm gonna do the uh, special tour that they have and the reenactment of the Boston Tea Party. So I'm gonna be throwing some tea into the harbor and I'm so excited. The, it was $39 and it's about an hour long tour and uh, it lined up perfect with our schedule and uh, I'll have enough time for everything. I'm excited. We have to head into the Old South Meeting House. This is actually really, really fun. I'm not gonna film most of the tour, just some of the highlights, you know? Oh my lord, I actually got a speaking role. So when you do do the tour, you get new identities, and now I am Thomas Porter. That is so cool. Oh, Mr. Porter, we've always invoked on the issue of taxation. What say you of the stamp act, sir? 
Parliament not only taxed our paper and ink, they even taxed our playing cards and dice. Oh, yeah. Boom! Our families and those who offer us will be subject to the fullest penalties of the law. Howdy, Patriots! Huzzah! Huzzah! Record low time. We have about 112 chests to destroy. And about a half a mile of Griffin's Wharf, so I do hope you have a hearty lunch. Very angry. This is actually an amazing tour because it gets you all hyped up. Usually when you do tours like this, uh, sometimes they can like drag out a little bit, but I mean, you're coming out to this ship and I was so excited to toss that tea into the harbor. It got me all like pumped up and excited. They got me all excited and I like it. This is a lot of fun. Now that we've tossed the tea into the harbor, we get to head into Abigail's tea room and we're gonna taste the five historic teas thrown of overboard on December 16, 1773. We're actually gonna taste those five teas. They have them right here for you. I think that's so cool actually. Here are them all listed right here. You can see on the bottom there. I could use a little tea though. Oh, and they also have clam chowder and a lot of other stuff in here. This has been pretty incredible. I'm now trying some of the tea that we just tossed into the harbor there, and I love it. This is so much fun, actually. And like I said, it keeps you all hyped up and ready to go. And I like how they uh, gave you a little mug to sip on the tea. The tea did cost $3.99, but you get as much as you want. You could try all five of them. And then they, like I said, they have, oh, I got a ginger ale too. Yeah, look at this, a Boston uh, Tower ginger ale. Nice little ginger ale. I love, I, I've been on a ginger ale kick recently and I love it. There's a lot more to the tour than what you're gonna see in this video, but usually when I do stuff like this, I just wanna highlight a little bit of it so that you can come and enjoy it for yourself and you know, kind of experience it without uh, seeing what happens. And uh, one of the things is you actually come over to another ship uh, across from uh, the ship we tossed the tea out of, and that seems like it, it's really cool. It's a little bit bigger of a ship. And uh, yeah, you guys should check it out. I think you might enjoy it a lot and learn something. That tour was so much fun. I'm so happy that we did it. And now it's time to head over to Fan Expo, dive into those cannolis and uh, get the ball rolling. I'm so, this has been a great trip so far and I know it's only gonna get better because we have Fenway. We're going to the Red Sox game tonight. I still keep on thinking, I'm like, holy moly. Here is the Roosevelt's booth at the uh, Boston uh, Fan Expo. You can see we've got some exclusive shirts this time. I'm excited. Got Loki. I know Loki just dropped uh, the new season. We got the Happy Gilmore shirt. Look at this. Wow. Honestly, I love this. If you're an Adam Sandler fan, this is so amazing. Everything from the, the, the clown to the, uh, the alligator. I love this. Oh my god, look at the ghost. Look at the ghost at the end of the movie. Today is only a half day for the expo. I think like the uh, VIPs get to come in and do some shopping. The official kickoff is like tomorrow. Uh, that's like when it's open in the morning. Today it's just the afternoon from like 2 p.m. to like I think it's 8 p.m. So it's not going to be that busy and uh, I'm excited to uh, try some of the pastries we got. We decided to do a quick shirt change for the Red Sox game, and we're wearing uh, the Floral City exclusive for the uh, Boston Fan Expo. And me and uh, Scotty decided to be shirt brothers. Shirt brothers. Shirt brothers. <laughs> hey, shirt brother. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that handsome guy. Right there. On our way over to Fenway, we wanted to stop at the oldest American tavern that is still in operation, which is the Bell in Hand Tavern, right here since 1795. 
Can you believe that? This is the oldest tavern in America. And this whole entire area is just really cool. You can definitely feel like uh, you're back in the 1700s. You've got the ye old Union Oyster House right there. And uh, yeah, how cool is this though? I'm like so excited. We've been doing so many amazing things and I just love all of the buildings in Boston. It really makes everything stand out. Here is a look at the menu and as you can see on the top there it literally says America's oldest continuously operating tavern and one of the things I wanted to try on my Boston trip was a lobster roll and they actually have a hot lobster roll here that sounds pretty amazing they have a the classic lobster roll but I've never had a hot one before so I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna indulge in a hot lobster roll. Of course, I have to try the uh, house beer, which is the uh, Bell in Hand Ale. And it's a little bit of a darker beer, but I'm excited to give it a go. Even though this is the oldest like American tavern, it has like a modern feel to it. They kept the building the same way, because you could tell by the walls, but uh, they definitely updated it. Uh, and uh, it kind of looks good. I like it. I love it walking through here though like i love all of the uh foundation of the building like the exposed wall and stuff look at this and here it is this is gonna be my very first time eating a uh lobster roll because normally i don't like mayonnaise and uh if you get a hot lobster roll it doesn't come with mayonnaise it's cooked in like a garlic butter sauce and then it has coleslaw on the side but look at how much lobster meat is on there. I feel like I picked a good uh, first uh, lobster roll. I am so excited to try this. I hope I don't make a big mess though. So we're gonna try to keep it close to the plate here. But at the same time, I wanna make sure that the lobster doesn't fly all over the place. So I'm gonna push it down a little bit. I'm gonna push it down a little bit and we're going on in. First bite. That is so good. Wow, what have I been missing? Honestly, I feel like I should try a regular uh, lobster roll now. I mean, uh, unless I can really taste the mayonnaise. I don't like the, the, the taste of mayonnaise. You know what I mean? So if uh, all the other ingredients kind of overpower it, I might like it. But uh, maybe we'll save that for our next time. But now I know it is so good. I'm so happy I got to try my first lobster roll in America's oldest uh, tavern. Like, that's perfect, right? Well, that was great success, and now it's time to make our way over to Fenway. We only stopped here because we had to meet up with some friends, but uh, I'm so excited. I mean, it's happening. This isn't my first time being in uh, Fenway, though, because when we first got here the other day, we actually uh, came for the Fall Out Boy concert. It was really nice. It was, really, it was a good show, and uh, now we're back again. I never went to you know, I'm starting to realize that the uh, Boston Floral City shirt is like the perfect Boston Red Sox colors. Look at that. I mean, it's amazing. Oh, wow. We got really good seats. Yes. Wait, this is us? Holy moly. This is really incredible. I'm so happy that I'm getting to experience this right now as my first game. Like, it's amazing. This is really, really cool. No. Oh my lord. Was that first pitch a home run? Did you get that? I did. Wow, my very first pitch at a Major League Baseball game was also a home run. Holy moly. What? Is this real? Is this like a glitch in the matrix? I was in such shock that a home run just happened. It just happened again. The Blue Jays just hit literally two home runs in the first three pitches of the game. Well, it looks like the Blue Jays hit two home runs in the first inning. So I decided to take some time and come on down and get myself a Fenway Frank. I feel like it's a have to. I'm going to get a Fenway Frank and uh, probably a Samuel Adams beer.
We got the classic Fenway Frank and also the Summer Ale. The Summer Ale has been really matching my vibe for this whole entire summer. So I've been loving it. And now, uh, yeah, I'm so excited. Got a little Fenway Frank. My first Major League Baseball hot dog. That's a good one. Wow! Another home run! But this time, Boston. This has been a crazy game. Especially for my first game, I still can't get over. The very first pitch I've ever seen was a home run. That is amazing and so awesome, but I'm really rooting for the Red Sox here. And then it was a strike and then another home run. So I saw four home runs so far in my first game. And uh, the Blue Jays are up four, uh, six to two. So I'm hoping the Red Sox come back. And uh, I was sitting there and I was thinking, man, I am at a, like, I'm at, I'm I'm at a Red Sox game, and I was like, I really want to get some peanuts and Cracker Jacks. So I went and got some. I know that's so cheesy, but I'm like, yo, I gotta get some peanuts and Cracker Jacks. I did not know they were gonna play this song. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I don't think I could have asked for a better first game experience. That was incredible. Even though the Red Sox lost, uh, they never came back. The Blue Jays were literally just home run after home run. I was so shocked. And how crazy is it for my very first game that for all that to happen? Like my first game was at Fenway. I was sitting behind the home plate. I had great seats. Um, my the first pitch was a home run, even though it was for the Blue Jays. But uh, wow, I love it here. It was just probably the highlight of my trip honestly and now I think we're gonna close it out and end it with our very last night in Boston with a little family dinner probably for our last night we wanted to have a nice little uh, family dinner uh, just me and DTH and Scotty so we uh, decided to come on down to uh, the North End and this uh, place is known for all the amazing Italian restaurants and uh, we're actually going to be going to one of the very best. I'm so excited. It is La Familie uh, Georgina's and uh, yeah we've heard some amazing things but I just love this whole entire area. Just roaming around Boston is so amazing. I've had the best trip so far ever. This restaurant is also located inside a civic uh, service house. How cool is that? Civic Service House, one of the several settlement houses in Boston, was founded in 1901 to provide services for local residents and newly arrived immigrants. We have ordered some appetizers and don't be deceived, these are appetizers. I can already tell you that the food portions are huge. Like, if these are the appetite, like these are literally just, app this is the uh, antipasti salad. Look at the calamari, this whole section was full. So I can't wait to see what the entrees are gonna be like. What is happening here? This is my chicken parm. And what did you guys get? What is this? Uh, I get the little owls with the uh, the gnocchi. Holy uh, moly! Same thing with the rigatoni. Look at the portion size. And and honestly, these aren't like overly priced, like twenty some dollar meals. Yeah, it's like great. it's insane. I can't even believe this. This might be my all time new like favorite Italian restaurant. This place is absolutely amazing. I love it. The portion sizes are incredible. The meatballs were good, and I really judge a lot of Italian restaurants on the meatballs uh, the sauce was good very tasty and a little bit in the middle not too sweet um, and uh, yeah I really liked it a lot I can definitely say uh, if this is like like in the top 10 like Italian restaurants in Boston then Boston knows how to do Italian food like you know what I mean like this is this is pretty cool 
This right here definitely is the most interesting looking tiramisu I think I've ever seen. Everything else has been amazing. I cannot finish my food. Like the amount of chicken and pasta, I think every dish comes with a pound of pasta. Like we have so much food, but we, uh, Dustin does have a friend here who, who is uh, giving us some extra appetizers. It's a family's restaurant. It's a yes. yes. And, but when we thought like giving us some appetizers, like we wouldn't have ordered these meals if we knew that the appetizers were bigger than like they, they were the size of the meals. But I couldn't leave without getting a tiramisu, and it looks so good. And with that, I think we are done here today. It's the perfect way to end the video. A beautiful night at Fenway and then a nice little family uh, Italian dinner. And that restaurant was so good, honestly. <laughs> I feel like that's going to be the one that I constantly talk about and compare a lot of places to for a while. And I'll definitely be going back. And uh, yeah, this has been an amazing trip to Boston. I had so much fun. This The city is truly amazing the history the art like everything the food it's just so awesome and I love it here so I'm definitely gonna be coming back and we got to do so much on so many like different nights uh, I'll have another video uh, but that's gonna be actually on the Roosevelt's channel because uh, we want to like kind of uh, like uh, do a little video where it shows like a behind the scenes of uh, like me Scotty, DTH, the Roosevelt's crew. So uh, that'll be out. I don't know when, but eventually it'll be out there. I'll put a link in the description. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. I enjoyed making it. So uh, we'll see you next time. Bye.